the family at this time would like to thank all those that have provided cards and flowers and food and calls. And as they put it, it's been a blessing and greatly appreciated. So at this time, we will pray. Almighty God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. You are always ready to give us more than we deserve. Pour out upon us your great mercy. Forgive us of these things which our conscience is afraid to ask. And please give us those things of which we are not worthy to ask. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of witnesses you have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. We praise you for those dear to us who have passed away and whom we pause to name in our hearts right now. Especially we praise you for James Thomas Crocker, whom you have graciously let us share life with. To all of us gathered here, grant your peace. Let your light shine upon us so that your presence may lead us through our years on this earth and bring us at last with those who have gone before us. And to the joy of our, your home, not made with human hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> now some Old Testament scripture readings. Hear the word of God from the Old Testament. We read first from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 28th to the 31st verses. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Now from Isaiah, the 26th chapter, the first four verses plus the 19th verse. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation to its walls and ramparts. Upon the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that Keep faith. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord Himself, is the rock eternal. But your dead will live. Lord, their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. It's from the 42nd Psalm, the first four verses. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as they pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Yeah. Hey. 
Now hear the word of the Lord from the New Testament. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old orders of things has passed away. He who has seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water, without cost from the spring of water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Now from Romans, the 8th chapter, 35, 37, 38, 39 verses. Can anything ever separate us from God's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? or are persecuted, or hungry, or destitute, or in danger, or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, nor even the powers of hell that can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now for the gospel reading, which will be John 14th chapter. The first six verses. Now, except for the family, with everyone who rise for the reading of the Bible. From New King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this is the word of God for the precious people of God. And I speak to God. God. Oh, 
a good place to say amen, you just missed it. Right there was a good place for you to say amen. Because this is a worship service. And this is a service of celebration. Because we believe in the sanctity of life. In death, we celebrate life. The life of Tommy Crocker. Servant, resilient, talented, thoughtful, family and faith are words that allow us to start our conversation about the man we have learned to admire and appreciate over the years. Today we'll pause for a few moments and celebrate the contribution that he made to family, friends, and community. When you hear about Tommy's life as a child, teenager, young adult, and adult, you see a constant theme arise that speaks loudly of him having a servant's heart. There are many examples that can be cited, but let me mention a few from recent years. Tommy loves serving the United Methodist men in a variety of ways. But one way that brought him much joy was cooking the monthly breakfast. He went to great lengths and pains to make sure each breakfast was perfect in every way. One thing Tommy knew was who could and could not cook. So he made sure those men stayed out of the kitchen that were not certified. Now, I'm just kidding about being certified. But Tommy did have strong opinions about cooking. He would get there early and leave late to make sure everything was just right. It was with pride that Tommy served the men of the United Methodist Church, preparing breakfast, fellowshipping with them while cooking and during the breakfast time and when the meeting was taking place. He loved serving those men. I just want to repeat it again. He loved serving those men. Some of you may not know, but Tommy was instrumental in putting together and supporting the first Relay for Life event and those thereafter. When Dottie was between jobs, the Relay for Life concept was introduced to North Carolina Cancer Society. The challenge was, it was a 24-hour event that had not been done before. Having food, entertainment, and all these other components made it a great challenge. After many meetings, hours of planning, discussions, and travel, Relay for Life became a reality, and Vance County through its citizens and businesses, gave in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, which exceeded all expectations. It was such a success that some of Vance County residents were elected to go to Washington, D.C. to relay on the mall. Tommy won recognition there for his participation, and it was well deserved, considering his hours of work to make it such a great event. Now, I could go on with other examples, but I think you get the message. Tommy was a servant in every sense of the word, and our community recognized this fact by naming Tommy and Dottie Crocker the 1997 Citizens of the Year. There's no question about it. He was a very resilient person. Being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at age 9, the question for his mother was, how would she be able to give him the shots? She didn't look forward to that and dreaded the thought of sticking her son with a needle. Well, the doctor came out of his office after telling Tommy about his diagnosis and after explaining it all to him, he then announced to Ms. Crocker that she didn't need to worry about shots. Tommy has that covered. They gave him instructions on how to administer the shot at his request, and that sure made things easier for his mother. Now that's a, that's a big deal for a nine-year-old. But Tommy's resilience came through loud and clear. He managed his diabetes throughout his life like a professional. He did the numbers, the math, and all the other calculations that allowed him to manage his diabetes perfectly. He also helped others manage theirs too. He was a resource for almost every topic pertaining to the condition. 
his strength and stamina came through with the job transitions that he went through. Working at Roses, then going to AmeriCal for 28 years, and it's good to see some of the AmeriCal family here today. You are a great family, and you have stuck together through thick and thin. And long after the closure of AmeriCal, you're still a family, and you still stick together. God bless you for that. Uh, then they closed, and he transitioned into Rose Oil as a computer systems facilitator, and he even did some consulting work out of town for a period of time. The point is, even with businesses closing and downsizing, Tommy was able to go from one place to another without allowing that to affect his self-esteem, his level of income and lifestyle because of his durability. Then for the last six years, he's been dealing with Parkinson's. The diagnosis alone could be enough for most people to just give up and give in. But not Tommy. He never complained. He never felt sorry for himself. He just accepted it and did the best he could to deal with it every day and maintain as normal of a life as possible. Tommy was not a big man, nor would he be considered a muscular person, but he was strong and he was tough. He was resolute. He was determined. He was stable, steady, and resilient. His life has proven this to be true, and this quality has made him the man we all learn to love, this resilient guy. Tommy was a very talented person, and I'm not just talking about his professional life or his ability to cook various dishes with perfection. I'm talking about his acquired ability to fix things. Dottie never had to worry about calling a repairman. She was married to one. Anything that broke down at the house, she just called for Tommy. And I'm sure there were times he got tired of hearing his name. Uh, the lawnmower stopped running. And Tommy got out of his trusted tools. He started turning screws and gadgets and got the mower up and operating again. The hanging door that was dragging was sticking. Once again, Dottie call for Tommy and the repair was made. Tommy has a well-stocked and supplied workshop that he spent a lot of time in simply because he enjoyed repairing things and making items too. And probably, to get away from Dottie a little bit. <laughs> I didn't say that, I, I retract that. No, you know the truth. Well with, his, <laughs> well, with his condition being what it was, when the lawnmower stopped running, he felt like he knew what it might be. He told God in what area of the mower to go and to turn the screw in this direction and take this off and look at it and then put it back on after cleaning it off and wiping it down. When Dottie went to where the mower was, she looked for the screw and what to take off and clean, but she never could find it even though she was looking right at it. She discovered not only that she was not a repair person, she barely knew what a lawnmower was <laughs> and couldn't find anything Tommy told her to look for either. So now Dottie has the name and number of a lawnmower repair man. Tommy was very efficient also in woodworking and especially making all kinds of picture frames. He has some beautiful picture frames at his house hanging on the wall and has made hundreds of frames and sold them. He had not even considered for a brief time the possibility of making them full time but realized all that was involved and decided not to go in that direction. Tommy had a very good singing voice as well and sang in a group at Blank Chapel for years. The song that I just sang was one that he sang often. The king is coming. Yes, Tommy was very, very talented. You may not consider Tommy as a caregiver, but he was. And he started early in his life and was really seen at age nine years old 
when he decided to take care of himself as a diabetic. He didn't leave it up to his mother or family. He took care of himself. Later in life, Tommy took care of his father in his declining health. After his death, he took care of his mother along with his sister's assistance, giving them the best of care, which took time and sacrifice. But again, he never complained. Then he and Dottie took care of her parents until their deaths. Now, Tommy didn't forget the attention Dottie needed. She was working in a very demanding job and the stress of that and taking care of her parents. Tommy realizing all of that gave her the care and attention that she needed to make it through difficult times. There are people here today that received a phone call or a personal word of encouragement from Tommy as he reached out to simply say, I care for you. His thoughtfulness came from his heart and his quiet spirit. And we'll all miss that. Tommy loved his family and his family loved him. Dottie and Tommy got married May the 17th, 1970. So this May 17th, they would have been married 51 years. Dottie, I know as you are looking back, you wonder where in the world has time gone. It passes by so quickly. But you and Tommy have worked, sacrificed, and labored to build a wonderful life. You made your house a home, a place where people can feel welcome, a place of warmth and generosity, a place where Jesus abides. You learned Tommy pretty quickly and knew that whenever you were not understanding what he wanted to communicate to you, He'd just say, I'll do it. So he wouldn't have to explain what he wanted done. He probably knew that he could do it quicker than he could explain it to you. You said he never told you no, and that's true. Probably he learned that if he did say no, you would stay after him until you wore him down. So yes was easier, less painful, even though it may have cost him a little more. You learned that he had been angry three times through your marriage that you could identify. None of them at you. But one time, his anger was demonstrated toward a preacher, probably a Methodist preacher. <laughs> I know it wasn't going to cost the whole thing. I know that. And then uh, the other two will be names. That's a very good record, considering all the things Tommy was involved in and the many people his life crossed paths with. Tommy was there for you, Dottie, and you were there for him. Dottie, you honored your vows, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death was part. I commend you publicly today for the attention you have given Tommy during his times of failing health. And also while he was well. When things were going well and when they were not going so well, you were there to be by his side. You could hold your head up high knowing you were a good wife and an honorable woman. The memories you have will help you in the days to come and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will certainly be a constant guide for you. Tommy loved his sister Nancy, and you both grew up realizing the importance of family. Crockers and the Dickersons. With the Crockers having six siblings and Dickersons having nine. Rather large families, but very stable families. And Nancy, you noticed in your brother that he handled tough challenges without ever complaining. I think most of us that knew him or were close to him saw that wonderful trait. Care enough about you to plant a rose garden in your yard. Had a special smile that you will never forget and that we all remember too. Family was so important that you took trips to the Outer Banks. Tommy grew a barbecue chicken and made orange sherbet for the family reunions. He worked late into the night to complete the family cookbook while visiting his mother every Saturday morning 
they Sunday afternoon calls to her. Tommy was the one who said the blessing at family meals and always emphasized the importance of family. And I hope that the Crocker and Van Dickersons will continue to emphasize to your children and grandchildren the importance of family and the great heritage that you have. I have had the great pleasure of knowing almost all those Crockers, those Dickersons, and uh, they are a great, great group. Nancy, you see and understand even more now how blessed you were to have Tommy as your brother. Tommy was also proud of his nieces and nephews. And you all have great memories of your uncle. And he set some great examples for you that I hope you will follow. Tommy was a man of faith, even though he was quiet and reserved about his faith. You know, he wasn't like some of us Pentecostals that are, oh, just out there, you know. He was quiet and steady about his faith, but he was solid with his faith. He lived it out every day of his life without shame or fear. A member of the First United Methodist Church, he supported his church with his tithe and offerings, along with his time and talent. He served the Lord through the church and was glad for the opportunity. He has now heard the Lord say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter now the joys of the Lord. You know, I have discovered through the years as a pastor that when a person from Tommy's generation dies, it takes more than one person to replace them because they are their commitment is deeper and wider and broader than some other people who are coming in these days. Some of them don't want to do anything. But Tommy was always there to do whatever needed to be done, whenever it needed to be done. Do you realize that death has not silenced Tommy Crocker? Listen to these words from Hebrews 11, 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaking. God required a certain kind of sacrifice, which was a blood sacrifice, from an animal. Cain was a man in the field and he refused to offer that kind of sacrifice. So he brought grain and things from the harvest which wasn't accepted. As a result of that, since Abel's sacrifice was accepted and Cain's was, was not, he became jealous. So jealous that he killed his brother Abel thinking he could silence him. But even from the grave, Abel spoke. I submit to you today that Tommy is still speaking. Hear him now as he speaks about service and about you being a servant and living for others and not living for yourself. One of the signs of the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. We need more and more men and women who will step up and love God supremely and serve man. I think he's saying be strong and don't cave in at everything that comes your way. Tommy was strong and he accepted the challenge that came to his doorsteps. Yeah, I think he's saying use your God-given talent for him and mankind. Whatever talent you've got, use it for God in God's glory. Tommy is saying, be kind and thoughtful. Tommy is saying, honor your father and mother and love your family. Tommy is saying, give your life to Jesus Christ. And I think Tommy is saying, be true to yourself. Tommy was true to himself. He didn't try to be anybody else but Tommy Cryer. And he did an excellent job 
being Tommy Crocker. And we all dearly loved him. And I thank God for allowing me the opportunity to know him and to be able to interact with him over the years. And I'm sure that you are echoing that same sentiment today. I want to offer a prayer. I know Jack's going to come back and pray, but I want to offer a prayer. And I want that prayer to be that we may hear Tommy speak to us. And as he speaks to us, that may bring conviction to us to cause us to live as we should. None of us expect to be, to be here today to memorialize Tommy's life. That's why the psalmist says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Only one life, and so soon that life will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for these words of celebration as we have honored the life of Tommy. Thank you for all the good that he's done while on this earth and how he has positively affected us and affected the church here at First United Methodist. How he's positively affected Henderson and Vance County. And how he has positively affected his family. Lord, minister to Dottie and Nancy and all the family today. Give them strength as they make this enormous transition. What you continue to do for each of us. We will thank you and praise you in Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. And Frank did a wonderful job about the breakfast that we had. The night of heaven this many breakfast. There was one thing he didn't mention. He did run the breakfast now, there was no doubt about that. But Tommy was also the treasurer of our group. He, he dealt with the money. He knew when we had too much and we shouldn't be spending some. He knew when we had too little and we didn't have a fundraiser. And he organized and worked so hard on stew sales, yard sales, and the like. And there's not a Methodist man in this building today or in our church that didn't know Tommy because of what he did for this church, for the men of the church. And we, we can only say that uh, he was he was the person that made us what we are. So we praise him for that. Thank you. And just let me pray at this time. This is the time when we're going to say goodbye to the body, the flesh, of Father Crockett. He'll never leave us. He will never, ever leave us. And Dorothy, I want you to know that and answer that. Oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave Tommy to us, now we give Tommy back to you. Receive him into the arms of your mercy. Raise him up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into the, your joy in the world to come. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, James, Thomas, Crockett. Acknowledge me humbly, beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Brother Tommy into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. And now we will recite together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. 
as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, except for the family, will we all stand as we are able for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I ask you to leave in silence and watch your way to recession. The family will lead first, then the usher will release you beginning with the very back row. Please remain standing until such time that the ushers give you the instructions on when to exit. At that time, you may go in God's peace. Amen. Amen.